Hey guys, welcome to my channel iCode. I am Pallav and today we are going to discuss actors. If I elaborate this, we will be discussing concurrency using actors. Most of the changes that were introduced in Swift 5.5, they were about concurrency. And I'm glad that Apple brought those APIs, Apple introduced those changes because dealing with threads, asynchronous calls, data race, race conditions, all these have always been a pain point for developers and Swift made it really easy by introducing the things like async await, actors and many more. Although there were solutions for these things like dispatch barriers, queues, locks, simuffers, but not as straightforward as actors. So today in this video we will see actors in detail. We will also see that how can we use them for dealing with data race. So we will take an example having data race. Then we'll fix that using our traditional way that is dispatch barrier. And then we'll fix the same thing using actors to see the difference to see that how actors are making our job easy. We will achieve the same thing without writing a single line of code that will be dealing with concurrency. So trust me, once you will get a hang of actors, you won't look at the dispatch queues and barriers, locks queues and all those things ever again. Along the way, we will also see that how can we update the UI components from some other thread without using dispatch.main.async because eventually that is also dealing with concurrency and Apple has introduced main actors for handling such stuff. We'll also use the async await API. So there's a bunch of new stuff that we'll be discussing in this video. Let's get started. Before starting with the code, let's first understand that what is data race. So data race is a situation in which a memory location is accessed by two threads at the same time and at least one of them is performing the right operation. Now this leads to the inconsistency in data. So the data that is being accessed by other thread, there are strong chances that it will get some incorrect data or it will lead to some weird behavior, some weird crashes, something that is not easy to debug and all those kind of things. And to understand this in more detail, we'll take a use case, we'll take an example of seat booking in flights. The expected behavior is that when one seat is being booked by a passenger, the same seat should not be available to other passengers for booking. Let's try to simulate this problem through code. So here in this view controller, I am having these two labels, Q1 label and Q2 label. We'll see them later that why I am having them, what is their purpose. But first of all, to simulate this flight behavior, let's create a class for flight. So here we are having two properties, one is for the name of the company and that is for a reason, we'll see it in some time and the other one is an array of strings for the available seats. Apart from that, we are having two functions, one is for getting the available seats from which we are returning this array and the other one for booking the seat in which we are removing the first element from the array and then returning that element to the caller function that this particular seat has been booked. So this is our class flight and now let's create the data race from the view controller. I have created two dispatch queues for accessing the flight object from two different threads. From this async block of Q1, I'm calling this method that is book seat. And from the async block of Q2, I'm calling the method for getting the available seats. Now let's give it a run and see that what gets printed in the console because we are having the print statement in these async blocks. We see that the available seats are 1A, 1B and 1C while the seat that is being booked is 1A. Now as per our expected behavior, if 1A is being booked, then it should not have been in this array of available seats because that is not available to any other passenger for booking. Now this is data race, that our flight object is being accessed by two different threads at the same time and one of them is performing the right operation. So we can see the inconsistency in the data. Now let's try fixing this inconsistency using the traditional way that is dispatch barriers and then we will see actors that how the actors can help in this situation.
here we have created a separate queue for handling the data arrays that is our barrier queue and then in the sync block of both the functions we are using the barrier flag to allow the access to only one thread at a time so this should fix our data arrays let's give it a run and we see that when one a seed is being booked the available seeds are 1b and 1c so our issue related to the data arrays has been solved but because actors have been introduced now I would not say that this is the best solution that we could have. We identified that this available seats array can be accessed by two threads at a time leading to data arrays. So we added a barrier queue, I mean we added a separate dispatch queue and accordingly we improvised our logic, we added synchronous blocks, we used the flag as barrier and we handled the situation. So a manual intervention is there and whenever a manual intervention is there, there are strong chances of error, there are strong chances that we can miss something. So that's why actors have been introduced. What actors will do is that they will take all these responsibilities of dealing with the concurrency related issues of dealing with these data races and, and these kind of stuff. All you need to do is just implement the business logic and that's all. Actors will take care of the other things. So let's see actors in detail. Actors are something which are very similar to class and that helps you in dealing with these concurrency related issues. Now before diving into the technical details, Let's understand the term actor. So I thought of it and I thought that why actor would have been chosen. Although this is an old concept and actor models have been existing there for a long time, but still if we try to understand it, to make it simple, to, to understand it in layman terms, who are actors, what do they do? So actors play the role of some other character. They play the role of someone else. For example, Michael Fassbender played the role of Steve Jobs in Jobs or Farhan Akhtar as Milka Singh in Bhag Milka Bhag. So what I want to convey here is that actor is someone who plays the role of someone else. And here in terms of our concurrency related issues, actor is someone who will be playing the role of us in dealing the concurrency related issues. So the things that we should have been taking care of, actor will be taking care of those things. For example, we won't be writing this dispatch queue for creating the barriers, for creating the synchronous blocks and for taking care of the data arrays. Actors will be doing all these things under the hood and we don't need to think about it. All we need to do is just focus on our business logic and implement it. That's all. So that is what an actor in layman terms and now understand its technical details. So actor is something that is very similar to class in terms of it is reference type and it can have functions, it can have properties, it can be used with protocols, it can be used with generics. So it is almost similar to class but the difference here is that actors cannot have inheritance unlike classes. Also, classes do not take care of the concurrency related issues out of the box, but actors do. So actors will deal all the concurrency related stuff, these data arrays and all those things without you writing a single line of code. This is done by keeping a track of the mutable and non-mutable properties in your type. So here flight is a type and if it would have been actor instead of a class, then the compiler would have automatically known that this is the immutable property and this is the mutable one. So this should be treated separately, this should be treated in a special manner and this can be treated in the conventional manner just like the class. And apart from keeping the track of mutable and non-mutable properties, there are certain other technical components also, for example, isolated state, non-isolated states, how actors communicate with other actors, how actors communicate with other entities like structs, class and, and those kind of things. So we will look at them, but as of now for theory, we can understand that actor is something that is very similar to class. It is reference type, it cannot have inheritance, it takes care of concurrency related issues and we should be using it wherever we feel that a data risk kind of thing can happen. Now let's rewrite our flight implementation using actor. The first thing that I will do is that I'll change this class to actor and I'll remove this queue that we created for adding the barriers. So we changed flight to actors and now let's see that what other changes we need to make. So I'll just try to run it and then we'll fix the errors. So we have two errors here in the view controller. Let's see them. It says that isolated instance method book seat cannot be referenced from the main actor. Now what does it mean? So compiler is telling us that we cannot access book seat in this way 
the function book seed is related to an isolated state and let's skip that what is isolated state we'll understand it in a minute but before fixing this error let's do one more thing we are having one more property that is company name in which we have assigned vistara let's try printing it let's try accessing that property and see that if we get the same error or not so here i'll just do print we see that we are still having the errors for these two because we haven't made any change for fixing them but we are not getting any error for flight.company why not this is because we have declared company as let so if we see here we are having company as let and available seats as well so compiler knows that available seats is something which can change it is mutable while company cannot because it is let so if something cannot be changed, if any manipulation on that particular property is not happening, then there's absolutely no point of keeping it in an isolated state or treating it in a special way that two threads cannot access it directly and that's why the error is not there. But for the available seeds, compiler knows that two threads can access it, some modification can happen, the values can change and hence it is being treated in a separate way and that's why we are having those errors over there. Let's confirm this by changing this variable to where. So if I change it to where and now if I try building it, we can see that we are getting three errors and we got it for company two. Now let's see one more concept that is the keyword non-isolated. So if I change this to a computer property, We are still having the error but now if I put a keyword that is non-isolated with this now let's see what happens and you can see that the count of error has reduced to 2 and we are not having this error for the company so with the keyword non-isolated we are explicitly telling compiler that this property of mine though it is where but we are not having any chances of data race related to this property and hence we are using this keyword non-isolated so that you treat it in the same way the way you treat the lat. So that's why we are not getting this error when we use the non-isolated word here. Now for fixing the errors related to these two methods that is get available seeds and book seeds which is using the property available seeds which is mutable, let's make some changes. So here let's use the async await. I'll explain that why we are using a single way, but let's try doing it first and let's see that what happens. It is saying that cannot pass function of type async void to parameter expecting synchronous function type. This is because we cannot call an asynchronous function from a synchronous function. So I need to call it from something which is asynchronous and of course I cannot change view did load to asynchronous because this is not my function. I'm overriding it or even if it would have been my function there's no point of changing this function to asynchronous one because the color of this function will also have to be changed to asynchronous and that goes in an infinite way. So the solution to do this is to wrap this in a task. So if I create a task here and put this entire implementation in this block, the error related to the await will be gone. We see that we got rid of both the errors. The one that was for async await and the other one that was for the isolated state of book seed. This is because by writing this keyword await, we are saying that yes, we are expecting a value, a return from this function that is book seed, but we are not sure, we don't know that when that value will be returned. Because this method is being accessed by two threads simultaneously and some other thread could have been performing some operations on that particular variable, that particular property through which the return is expected. So we are not sure that when that value will be returned, but we are waiting for it and whenever that will happen, we'll get the value. So for that, for dealing with that asynchronous and await thing, we have used the word await and once we used it, we are not getting any error related to that. And for using the async await, we use the task here. So now we are not getting the error for the async await also. Let's do the same thing for get available seats also. So I'll first wrap it in the task. And then I'll use the await here. And let's remove this print statement too. And 
and we see that the book seat is 1A while the available seats are 1B and 1C. So the same output that we achieved using the dispatch barriers using the dispatch queue, we achieved it using Ector and if we focus on our type that is flight, we see that the code is a lot more cleaner, we are not having any dispatch barrier, any synchronous block, nothing. Everything is being handled by the actor itself. We are only having our functions book seat and the get available seat. That's all. So this is what I wanted to convey here that we can achieve the concurrency related things. We can achieve the fixes for the data race, race conditions using actor without writing a single line of code that will explicitly deal with those situations with those conditions. So this was about the actor thing. And now let's see one more part that is related to the main actor. So main actor is something that has been introduced in Swift 5.5 for taking care of the things that should be done on the main thread. For example, updating the UI. So whenever we get the data on a background thread from any asynchronous call or something, and we update the UI on the main thread because that is the best practice that is how we should do it. And I have explained that why we should update the UI on the main thread. The link of that video is here. So the baseline is that we need to update the UI on main thread while we are receiving the data on the background thread. And for this, we use the dispatch.main.async block. But with Swift 5.5, with the introduction of main actor, we don't need to do that. What we can do is that we can mark our struct, our class, or any of our implementations with the annotation at the main actor. And then that particular implementation will take place on the main thread. So for example, here, if I want to update this Q1 label, I will not put it in the dispatch main.async block. Instead, what I'll do here is that I'll make a method say flight. I have marked the method with main actor and now I can call it from any background thread, any task, any asynchronous block and I won't get any error from the main thread checker or compiler and it won't result in those weird crashes that we get because of the UI API being called from the background thread and those kind of things. So I can simply capture self here, v self. if I give it a run we see that the label that was having q1 status has been updated with our seed that is 1a and we are having no warnings from main thread checker or anything like that so that was just a gist about the main actor while main actor can do a lot of things if you want to read about it either you can go through the documentation and you can directly access by command shift closing parenthesis so here, if you look, you can read about the main actor thing or you can put in the comments if you want to know more about the actors and main actors and global actors and those kind of things. But the point of the video was that we are having better APIs for dealing the concurrency related stuff like actors, async, await and those kind of things. And we should be using it, get a hang of it. They are really easy to use and they makes our lives easy. So that was pretty much about this video. A new video comes out every weekend. So you can consider subscribing to the channel. Let's write better code together. Happy coding and stay safe.